Welcome to Keeping It Real. We're going to talk today about how to create a golden letter, a very, very, very simple letter that you can send out to homeowners uh, to get them to call you to sell their house. And I'm going to walk you through today three things, how to get the list, how to actually build the mailing list, how to write the letter, and how to mail it. So you're going to learn all that in the show today. So before we start, my name is Frank Closets. I've been hosting Keeping It Real for six or seven years. Go check out keepingitreal.com, keepingitreal.com. And you'll see all the past shows of all these years of interviewing top agents from around the country. And there's so much to learn there. Uh, you can also go to our host, uh, kind of our, our producer here, Real Geeks. You can go to the Real Geeks Facebook page to learn more. There's also a Real Geeks Facebook group. Uh, in addition to that, we're also on iTunes. So if you go to iTunes and type in Keeping It Real, if you want to listen to it on your you know, iPhone or Android or whatever, uh, you can listen to it that way. It's available for you or watch it however where they post it there. But uh, my name is Frank Closets. My firm is Viral Marketing. That's what I do for a living. Go check that out. And I'm just here to show you what's working in marketing today. So I appreciate you showing up. Uh, we're going to walk through all of this. Hopefully, it probably won't take very long. It's actually a very simple strategy. I just kind of figured instead of doing an interview today, there's lots of different interviews. Sometimes it's nice just for someone to walk you through literally how to do something to make some money. So that's what you got today. So uh, before we start, though, I do want you to know, if you like this show and there's other shows that you'd like to be notified in the future, uh, go to keepingitreal.com, put your email address in, and we'll notify you of future shows. We won't email you any spam or anything else. Just be when future shows come up. So you know that you can come on here on YouTube Live or wherever you're watching. That's wherever this is being streamed or you're watching the replay. Um, you know, stay up to date. Just sell a lot of houses and make a good living for yourself in real estate. So let's get started. So the golden letter. Um, I don't know where the golden letter came from. I just hear a lot of people saying it. <laughs> so I kind of use that... Uh, that, um, that language here in the title. But essentially the golden letter is, is I have a buyer. It's essentially a message that you send to a homeowner that says, hey, I have a buyer and if you're interested in selling your home, give me a call. Now, the first thing I want to address upfront with an I have a buyer letter is ethically, you absolutely 100% need to actually have a buyer. Got it? Now, these could be other buyers that bid on a house that they lost out on. These could be buyers in your Real Geek CRM that are actively looking for properties in the same zip code or the area. All right. So you have buyers that maybe missed out on the bid on a property or you have buyers in your CRM searching for property in the area. Like you literally have actual legitimate ethically, you have buyers. The other option, which would be a great complement to that or replacement, is you go get yourself hooked up with some type of institutional buyer. This is getting really hot where, you know, bags of cash are coming to the real estate market and there's institutions that want to make pretty favorable offers on homes. I'm coming in sometimes coming in 87%, 90% of what the home is worth all fixed up, which is not bad for the speed and convenience of an iBuyer, you'd say. So your brokerage, your brokerage that you're with may have some type of express offer program or offer program that you can claim that you have a buyer that way. You can go build relationships with local investors. So just go to Google and type in sell my home fast city or we buy houses city. And I promise you, (laughs) those are very expensive keyword terms. Anyone that is ranking or paying for a pay-per-click on those Google searches or is ranking like in the first page of the results is probably spending a lot of money to be there. And they could be some of your instant offer buyers. Hopefully if they come in at a decent price, it's not embarrassing to offer the seller. Or there's also other companies, you know, no affiliation. I'll just throw out a few um, that uh, provide relationships with institutional buyers. So you have some type of iBuyer or guarantee offer program. Uh, uh, I Real Estate Pro. So the letter I, Real Estate Pro. Uh, that's run by an individual named Dan Noma who sells thousands of houses a year um, out of uh, Phoenix. And if you take a certification, it's actually really good. Go check out iRealEstatePro. Estate Pro. There's another company that will hook you up with institutional buyers so you can ethically send out a golden letter. Go check out Zavi, Z-A-V-V-I-E. Again, no affiliation, just these are companies I run in that you go check out. Uh, Zavi, there's also a new one I heard of at Inman called Zoodelio, Z-O-O-D-E-A-L-I-O. Go check them out. And again, I'm sure there's others. But I just want to bring to your awareness that if you're looking to have some type of guaranteed offer program or instant offer program, um, those are great companies that will hook you up with institutional buyers, which allow you to ethically go to the marketplace with the best seller lead generation message that exists. I have a buyer for your home. Call me. (laughs) Got it? And that's really what the golden letter is. So I'm going to show that to you here in a minute. Um, But first, let's just talk about pulling the mailing list. So let's get to it. All right. So how do you generate some seller leads using this golden letter? All right. Uh, Well, first, you need to actually have buyers. We talked about that. Now that you can ethically do it, you actually have buyers. Uh, Now you have to pull a list. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, The first list is when one of your listings goes pending. So once one of your listings goes pending, 
uh, maybe pull a couple hundred homes around it and just send out a letter to, you know, let them know that the home down just sold and you have buyers that didn't win the bid and to give you a call if they're interested in selling their home. Uh, you can also pull a list of around a home that just sold and say, hey, just so you know, this whole home just sold down here. There's other buyers that want it. I have them. Please give me a call. Would you be interested in selling your home to one of my buyers? Or you can just send it out to really whoever you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, generally speaking, probably the most responsive list to direct mail. Again, you start with mailing some homes right around a pending or right around a just sold. But from a wider standpoint, um, you know, generally an older demographic responds better to direct mail, generally speaking. So if you're going to mail homeowners that you have a buyer in an area, whether it be a neighborhood or a zip code or a county, I mean, however big you want to go that you can ethically do because you actually have buyers for them or that area. Um, I like to see single family homeowners um, that are individually owned, not owned in an LLC, uh, that have been lived in for at least 10 years. So there's some equity in the house to pay you. They've lived there for a while. In some areas, you might even go as high as 20 years. So people that have been living in their homes for a long time, right? Um, those are some of the best uh, best list to mail. So let's go ahead and pull a list. Let's just show you how I do this. Now, there's lots of companies you can use to pull a list. Uh, one of the first places I would go check out is just call your title company. You just tell your title company, hey, give me a list of all the homeowners in this neighborhood or you know, two or 300 homes around the, this home that just went pending or sold. And they'll probably be able to pull it for you for free or very low cost. That's your first option. Um, your second option is inside your MLS. So inside your MLS, you might have a program called Remine, R-E-M-I-N-E. Uh, I believe it might be RealQuest or Realist, a core logic product, RealQuest or Realist or something like that. There might be that product inside your MLS where you can just basically pull up a little Google map and draw a little area and export all the homeowners. Um, if you don't have something inside of your MLS to do that, um, go check out, um, again, no affiliation, just these are services I like to use. Uh, PropStream, P-R-O-P-S-T-R-E-A-M or Property Radar. So Property Radar is an option, okay? I'm a customer of PropStream, I'm super happy. Um, as of right now, I think they charge 100 bucks a month for 10,000 exports a month for property data. But I'll pull it up here, okay? So let's go ahead and actually share my screen. So let's actually pull a mailing list. How does that sound? And here we go. Is it coming on my screen? Boom. It worked. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. Let's format this correctly. Okay. So I'm just going to pull up, um, let's pull up an address. Uh, gosh, I don't know. Um, sure. There's an address. Well, now let's use this address. Whatever address that is, that was the last search. Okay. So um, as you can see here, here's this property. Um, looks like it's an industrial building, but that's fine. And I think what it automatically did, in fact, over here in the search, let me see here. Let me actually remove the search. This is the challenge with doing screen shares. I'm usually not in here very much. I'm just going to draw like a little box around here. See this? Sure. Great. Enter. All right. Beautiful. So what I did is I just took a property or took an area, took a zip code, took a neighborhood, whatever the, whatever the area is that you want to mail. Again, I probably would recommend maybe just two to 300 letters to start. And I just draw a little, little box here of all these properties. So I go over here. Here's 188. Perfect. All right. 188 homes um, around this area that I want to mail saying I have a buyer because I ethically do have a buyer. So I'll go ahead and take this list. And I'll go ahead and click add the list. I'll just call this, uh, I don't know, um, keeping it real. Save. All right. So there's a mailing list. And now I'm going to head on over here to export it. So let's go over here to contacts. I believe that's it. Let's do a search, or it's my properties. Let's do a search for keeping it real. Boom. Wonderful. And I'm going to export the list. This will export this into a CSV file. So I'll go ahead and save that to my hard drive. And let's go ahead and open this thing. I'm going to change my screen sharing window. So you now see Excel. Are you ready? So I'm going to go ahead and change my screen sharing window to, hang on, hang in there with me. I can do this. Excel. Yay. All right. Hang on here, everyone. It's getting crazy. Let's make sure you can see it. Nope. You can't see it yet. Sorry, I wish I was a little more smooth for you here. Hang on. There we go. All right. 
So one of the first things I do is this is what it kind of comes out as directly from the county, something like this. I'm only going, I'm now going to get rid of all the fields that I don't need. So watch me clean this up. So here's property address. Don't need unit because that's already merged. So property address, property city, property state, property zip. I do not need this information. I want to keep owner first name and last name. I don't need the next name. Don't need mailing care of, but I do want the mailing address. I don't need the unit because that's in here. And I can get rid of all this other stuff. This is all not useful to me. All right. Boom. Now, just to make my life easier, I'm going to go ahead and move the first name and last name here. Probably tell it I've done this a few times. All right. Like that. Great. So you have first name, last name. Here's the address of the property. And then over here, you have the mailing address. And if the mailing address is different than the property address, that's typically your absentee owner, right? Uh, which is fine. So, we'll so we're going to make sure that we'll merge property address into the letter. But on the envelope, this will be the letter, but in the envelope, we're definitely going to mail it to the mailing address. Got it? Let me actually make this a little larger for you. How's that? That should make your life a little easier. How does that look? Yeah. There we go. Perfect. All right. So now what I do is I'd go through this list. I don't want to mail LLCs. I remove all the LLCs and I can do a search for this, make this easier. I don't need to send all these people. I'm not mailing Walmart. All right. And I could have drilled this down. So it was only single family. There's other selects I could have chosen, but for the most part, I'm going to remove anything from the list that I think just doesn't make any sense for me, like mailing Walmart <laughs> or any LLCs. I just like mailing individual owners. All right. So I go through here and I would clean this whole thing up, which I'm not going to do for the sake of time, but I think you guys get it. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select all. And under data here, I'm going to go to remove duplicates. And I want to make sure that, you know, you don't want to mail someone like five different letters if you have the same mailing address. So I go ahead and make sure I deduplicate by mailing address. Watch this. It removed 20 duplicate values. That way, um, you know, if someone has the same mailing address for whatever reason, probably some landlord in the list, they don't get like two, three, four, or five letters. I deduplicated my mailing address. Now, the next thing that I would do inside this list to get it ready for mailing is I would put all of these uh, addresses in long form. So, I mean, think about it. If you get a letter and it says ST or AVE, it kind of looks like it's not personal. So, I like to go through here and do a find and replace. So, I'll, I'll replace space ST with a space street. And what that did, do you see how it made all of these in long form? Mary Street. 103rd Street, I would go through here and make sure all of the addresses are in long form. I think it looks more personal in the letter and it looks more personal in the mail merge, all right? So once this is all done, now that I have all of these, these are all the owners of all the properties around this certain area, wonderful. I'll go ahead and click save and I will save that list to get ready for a mailing. That's kind of my process of updating a mailing list. There's other things you can do to it, but it's a pretty much you do those things, you're good to go, you're ready to get mail. So I'm going to stop my screen sharing. So the next thing we have to do is now it's time to write the letter. All right. So let's actually pull up a letter. And the letter can be soup. Here's the deal with the letter. America sorts its mail over the wastebasket. All right. You go to your mailbox, you have the A pile and you have the B pile. You have to get in the A pile. A pile mail is super, super personal. If there's anything on there that looks like it's business mail or junk mail, it goes in the trash. <laughs> okay. So we want to do total sneak up mail where it's extremely personal. Got it? That's what gets the response. Going junk mail or anything like that doesn't quite get the response. Now, I do want us to give a caveat to that. If you have a relationship with the list, so for example, if you know me and I put my logo for my company on there, or you watch Keeping It Real and put the logo for Keeping It Real on there, it's perfectly fine to show up branded. If you have a permission-based list, and people already know you, go ahead and put all your branding on there. It's fine because there's a relationship there. But if you're going cold and people do not know you, it's sneak up mail. It's unbranded. That's a rule in direct mail marketing. If there's an existing relationship, it's branded, generally speaking. If there's not a relationship, it's unbranded. Got it? Huge takeaway if you made it this far. All right, from someone who does a lot of this. So um, let's write the letter. So I'm going to pull up Microsoft Word and let me show you the base of the letter. And you can add a little more to this, but this is all it needs to be. Are you ready? Here we go. Share screen. Here it is. Here it is. Your name, your real estate agent, your brokerage, 
put your number on there, right? If you need to put your number on there, perfectly fine, all your disclosures, put your address. Dear first name merge, would you be interested in selling your home at property address merge? This is why I like putting long form in the property address that's more personal to a client of mine. If so, please call my cell phone at this number. Thank you, your name. That's it. That's it. This is what gets the phone to ring, all right? Now, could you add another sentence in here? You know, the property down the street from you at, you know, 123, 125 Elm, just sold for, you know, $40,000 over asking price. Or 40,000 over asking, and those buyers want, you know, and had what? <laughs> had 32 offers. You know, 31 of those people, you know, you know, um, the buyers who didn't get it want to likely buy your home. Sure, you could add that. I don't think it makes any difference. All right. Generally speaking, the less you put in the letter, the better. Okay. So could you add another little line in there or two? Sure. Yes. But from a raw skeleton standpoint, really all this needs to be is just that. Clear? That's it. Now, I really recommend that you don't use your real cell number here. I recommend you go sign up for a service like CallRail, C-A-L-L-R-A-I-L -L -L or something like that, where you use like a, a vanity number. So when people call that number, it's tracked and you can forward it to whoever you want. Uh, it'll make your life a lot easier. Uh, that way you have some control over the... Um, over the letter. This is letter. This is it. Easy. Merge first name, merge property address, and then you put your phone number here, whatever it is. Got it? All right. I'll save that as a PDF. And now I have the list as a CSV file, and I have the PDF uh, of this letter saved on my desktop. All right. So we have the PDF of letter, and we have the mailing list. Sweet. All right. Next, it's time to mail it. So this is where you find either you do it yourself or you use a mail house. So probably, you know, if you're not doing a lot of mail and it's a small little batch, do it yourself. You know, print the letters off, do a mail merge in Word, print the letters off, all right? Fold them manually, hand write the address, the mailing address on the letter, all right? Uh, you can certainly put uh, your name in the return address. Uh, just to make sure you don't put your company. So like your personal name, like Joan Smith, 123 Elm Street, Omaha, Nebraska, whatever. All right, don't put your company. So you're, feel free to write the return address, just your personal address. It could be, be your business address. Make sure it doesn't say a company. You don't want to give away anything about a business here. And then you write down their mailing address with a real stamp and you just do it manually. Got it? What's nice about that, if you don't factor in labor, I don't know, cost you what? 60 cents, 70 cents a letter, all right? Now, I want to let you know that there's also companies you can go to that will mail these letters for you. There's mail houses. There's many of them. Uh, click to mail. Click to mail is one. Uh, the one that I like, that I use, that I have great things to share. Again, no affiliation, just, you know, service that we use is letterprinting.net. Let me pull it up here for you, and I'm going to go ahead and click share. Where are we at? No, no, no. You can do this, Frank. Uh, there we go. And voila, on screen. Boom. All right. So here's letterprinting.net. I'll make sure I do this good sizing for you. So, so watch this. I'm going to go over here to letter printing services and click a one sheet letter. All right. And they really specialize. Look, they can send out all these different types of letters. They really specialize in sending personal letters. So here's the selects um, that I would use if I were you to get the best response from a letter. So no need to do a full bleed, no need to perforate, but don't send out cheap, crappy paper. Put this on 70 pound matte paper. Spend a little more on some quality paper, all right? Letter printing style, very simple. You can do black and white on the front. There is no color. So black and white on the front and blank on the back, perfectly fine. Mail merge, yes, you are gonna be doing the mail merge. Do that for you when they print. Envelope type, um, white non linen envelope is just fine. Just stick with that, all right? Envelope printing style, we're just gonna do black and white on the front and blank on the back. They're just gonna type the name on the front. Now, there's pros and cons of using the fake handwriting versus the real fonts. I won't get into that for the recommendation here. Just have them type, you know, just a 
the font on the uh, for the return address again, which is a personal name, okay, and the mailing address, and ask them to use large font. So like maybe a size 14 or 16 point font. It should look, you know, see, I don't really like the, the um, that fake handwriting so much. You know, I think you're probably better off using um, uh, typed. Um, okay, I'm just trying to see if I have some letter examples laying around here. Uh, but if you are going to go typed, you want to make the type look personal. And one of the ways you make the type look personal is make it large. So like size 14 or 16 point on the envelope typed. Look super personal when you do it that way. Okay. So envelope printing style, black and white in the front, blank on the back. Trifold is fine. Now postage, all right. Never mail standard. Standard will take forever to get there. It doesn't forward. It's basically the junk mail rate. Uh, the only time I would even consider mailing standard if you're sending more than like 10,000 letters, maybe. All right. I would like you to mail first class regular or probably anything under 200 letters, okay? And if you're more than 200 letters, you can get a little bit of a discount by going first class pre-sort, all right? It's the same exact stamp. The only difference is, is a little cancellation mark or not that's printed if you go first class. If you go first class, they put like a cancellation on the stamp. If it's pre-sort, there's no cancellation. It might give it away as junk mail, but most people don't know about the cancellation mark. So it's not a big deal. I'm just telling you to save a little bit of money. If you're doing more than 200 letters, go pre-sort. If it's less than 200 letters, do uh, just regular first class mail. All right. Real stamp, always, never metered. Mm -mm -mm. Real stamp. This is all fine. Leave it here. Leave it here. This is all fine. All fine. Let's type it. I don't know what the, what the size of the list was. It was like, say, you know, 200. So total cost, $242. So you can fulfill it yourself. It'll cost you what? Maybe 60, 70 cents a piece. I don't know, what's 200 times 0. 0.6? 120 bucks. Or you could say, you know what? I'm not gonna do all that fulfillment myself for 200 letters. I'm just gonna go have a mailhouse company do it. All right, and then you click add to cart, done. They're gonna ask you to upload your mailing list, your CSV file, all right? You upload the PDF that has those merge fields in there that I showed you where the merge fields goes. And let me just show you when you want to do a merge field, here's how you type it. Let me show it one more time. Yeah, there we go. Whenever you want to merge something, um, you just put it between two brackets. So merge first name there, merge property address. Perfect. Okay. Let me go back. Now in the notes, so we upload it to them. There you go, write some notes. Say, hey guys, um, would you please, in the attached spreadsheet, merge first name and property address into the letter? Um, in addition to that, make sure to use the mailing address um, on the envelope. And here's the return address, which is just my name and address, all right, personal. And you may, you don't even have to use a return address. So if you prefer to skip the ad return address, just leave it off, it's fine, all right? Uh, just make sure that when they type the mailing address and letter, uh, they use like a 14 or 16 point font um, you know, Arial or Times New Roman, it makes it much more personal. So if you're worried about like, how does, well, typing, maybe I should handwrite it. You know, should I personally handwrite it? Should I use the fake handwriting? Should I use typed? Uh, go with typed, but a large font. Sound good? And um, they'll process it. They'll send you a proof. You click the proof and then they mail it. Uh, sweet. It's like sending an email, right? Like you load a list up and you send a PDF out, you send an email out and it goes out. It'll probably take maybe about a week to get there. And then hopefully people call. So you're going to get this phone call. You know, let me share with you how to convert the lead. All right. Um, hey, uh, is, this, is this Frank? What's this What's this letter that you sent me of this nonsense that you had this buyer for my house? What is this? <laughs> All right. Like, oh, yeah, great. Yeah, thank you for calling. I really I really do have a buyer. Um, you know, would you like to know what they could pay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, exactly. that's why I'm calling. I want to know how much they pay me. I want, I want a lot of money. I want top dollar for my house. Great. I mean, as you should. You know, homes, there's not very many homes for sale you probably will get top dollar. Um, you know, my question to you is, would you like an accurate offer <laughs> or you just want me to kind of make a guess of what they're willing to pay? Well, I mean, I want, a, I want an accurate offer. Give me an accurate offer. Okay, all right, great. Well, you know, you know, Zillow and, you know, these other websites kind of say your home might be worth right around here, but come on, we all know that the, the most accurate home value would reflect the unique features of your home. Uh, would it be all right if I could see it? That way, if I got some pictures or I got some video of your house, I could show it to my buyers and, you know, so you have to like it. Uh, yeah, I guess so. That makes sense. How do you want to do that? Well, you know, you can, 
I have a checklist here to, you know, here's some pictures you can, you know, here's a list of maybe 20 photos like you take with your phone, or I could send a runner out there to get some photos, or I can come on out and get some photos. Which would you prefer? Are you available Friday at four or five o'clock for me to come by and snap some photos and maybe submit your house to my buyers and see what they would want to pay you? Uh, sure. Yeah. Friday at four sounds great. Great. I'll be there. Awesome. Appointment. So now you show up. Hey, I'm, hey, I'm the realtor. Um, like I said, I have those buyers. Would you mind if I take some photos of the house and submit to my buyers? Great. And while I'm here, if I find you a buyer, will you pay me a commission? Won't be much. Maybe like one or 2%. At least if I can do it off market without having to list it and do everything else. You know, will you sign this little commission agreement and you go to a real estate attorney or whatnot to get a commission agreement. They sign it. All right. So now you go back with the photos and you submit them to these companies like Zudelio or Zavi or uh, I Real Estate Pro, wonderful program. Go check them out. Okay. And, um, or, you know, you just send the pictures off to some buyers that you're working with and, you know, see if you can put together some offers. And you call them back. And this is maybe an appointment that you scheduled by the time you leave. You call them back in a couple of days and you say, hey, I have these offers. Can I come out and meet with you to go over all of your options? That's the key, all of your options. So now you show up on the listing presentation, which is really the second appointment. You say, great, I'm, I'm delivering on exactly what I promised you in the letter. Here are my offers. Let's go through them. These are the instant offers. They're a little bit for less money, but they have maximum convenience. I mean, they have the best terms, but you know, your house is going to sell for the, you know, 85, 90% of what it's worth. All right. Uh, the other option is we can list it on the market. Here's what look for listing on the market. We, maybe we can do some pre-listing improvements. Maybe we can do like a little concierge program. You know, maybe we can auction it. All right. But, uh, or you can maybe do one of these programs like with Homeward or Knock or some bridge loan program to help you buy before you sell. The point is, is now in that second presentation, you're now going through all other options with the seller, all right? And they get to choose. And whatever option they choose, you have some way of getting paid, whether it's on the instant offer with the commission agreement that you got, or it's with, um, you know, obviously getting traditional listing, you help the seller solve their problems. Got it? That is how you would best align with the consumer demand to convert one of these calls. That's how I would go about it. All right. That's one of the ways to go about it. There's other ways. That's one of the ways I want you to think about how could you handle these, um, you know, calls when they come in and saying, hey, I got what's this buyer nonsense? Well, there you go. That was a perfectly ethical way of handling it to do it correctly. All right. So uh, this might be the shortest keeping it real ever. You came here to learn how to send a golden letter. We talked about uh, you need to have a buyer. We talked about how to pull a list. I showed you a little bit how to format it, my thoughts on formatting it. I showed you how to write a darn simple letter, darn simple personal letter, right? Okay. And then I showed you how to either, you know, do it yourself or use a mail house to send it out. And this could be, a, the key here is a system. The key here is every time a listing goes pending, every time you sell a home or every single week, every single month, and whenever you, whenever you have buyers, your job is to match buyers or sellers, right? I have a buyer messaging is like the best seller lead generation. So, you know, getting this into some type of system where you have these letters consistently going out will lead you to get consistent listings. All right. So Cindy, thank you for saying good info. I appreciate you. I have nothing else. So I'd like to open this up for questions. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. I know we're using a little different program here to, you know, stream this wherever you're at, but if you have a comment or there's a questions box, feel free to ask me and I would love to answer them for you. But that's all I got for keeping it real this week. This one's a simple one. Hopefully it got you the information that you need to go out and do likewise and generate yourself some seller leads with Golden Letter, which is exactly why you came here on the show. <laughs> Just me today, no interviews. So you have a question, type it. I'd be happy to answer. I'll wait here a bit if it comes on in. Shelly asks, what are your thoughts on handwritten letters? They're great. Oh, hand, oh handwritten. No. <laughs> the actual letter? No. Just no. Um not scalable, juice isn't worth the squeeze, it's too much. Um, you're much better off just a printed letter, all right? You could argue hand addressing the envelope. I could argue hand addressing the envelope manually, which is fine for small batches, a couple hundred. But actually writing out the letter, no, crazy craziness. Um, I've heard of people scaling this up, probably using a lot of stay-at-home moms that can work, you know, stay-at-home moms or dads, all right? But someone... Yeah, there's a couple hours a day when the kids are napping to write some letters and they scale it up and that's perfectly fine. It, it is just so laborious to do that. Um, there might be a few people you hear doing it that way. It's very difficult to scale. I would not handwrite the letter. Possibly handwrite the envelope if you're fulfilling it yourself. 
But ultimately, if you want this thing moving, uh, maybe look at just using a mailhouse like we talked about here today. So great question, Shelly. Uh, will you send it a copy of this class? Absolutely. The recording will be on YouTube. So if you go to the Real Geeks YouTube channel, um, you'll see a playlist called Keeping It Real, and you can watch the replay. It's right there. All right. I think we'll also post it on the Real Geeks Facebook page. So Real Geeks Facebook page. Um, and also be on iTunes, like we shared at the start of the show. What else would you guys like to know? Ask me anything. Generating solid leads through direct mail. It's darn simple. I wish they would teach this more often than pestering all your friends and family and banging out cold calls. <laughs> this is a lot easier. Yep, replay will be there of class on YouTube. It like records it right there for you guys. I'll give about 30 more seconds. Yep. Does this letter outperform the long letters? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lead generation letter is short, okay? So lead generation by design is basically, hey, do you have this problem? I have a solution. Call me or email me or go here and put your name in a form. Lead generation is like very short messages. Got it? Like a 30-second radio ad, um, quick little Facebook ad, quick little letter, uh, hiring an outbound cold calling team, want to sell your house, want to sell your house, want to sell your house. Lead generation is short, all right, to get the contact information. Got it. Like these are people that have the problem that you solve or the pain that you solve. Um, lead conversion rather, right? Like actually converting that to like an appointment or a sale. That's where long form copy comes in. So John Smith, uh, long form letters do not increase lead generation. I would use short, simple letters for lead generation. But when it comes to lead conversion, like let's say this person actually booked an appointment. You know, what do you put in your pre-listing kit? Like arguably writing out your entire listing presentation in a sales letter, you know, like one of these long form sales letters. Should that go in your pre-listing kit? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we have clients that teach seller workshops. So we'll teach an hour, hour and a half Zoom on, you know, educating the public on everything you want to know to sell your home. And um, they'll send either a transcript or a write-up of that seller workshop in the pre-listing packet or send them the actual recording before the appointment. Uh, think of long, think of um, habit METs, short. METs, once they give you permission to stay in touch, once the lead is generated, long form. Great question, John. Great question. Uh, if there's an existing relationship, long form. If there's not an existing relationship, probably short form, all right? Is there a video that you've done on pre-listing kits? Uh, no, but I, you could do this. Uh, just go to Eventbrite. Go to Eventbrite and type in seller workshop, <laughs> all right? Uh, you'll find real estate agents all over the country doing them and they're like all on Zoom now and just go sign up for one, all right? Um, what they're teaching in the seller workshops is essentially what, whether it's written or video, however you want to do it, you know, um, that is what I put in the pre-listing kit. Uh, essentially, again, you know, your job as a listing agent is to say, yeah, you know, I got everything. There's a lot of ways to sell your house. <laughs> sure, you take an instant offer, we can do this, we can do that, we can do the other thing. Your job is to help them understand all of their options. And there's really just nothing better, in my opinion, that positions you as an expert than like teaching seminars on how to sell your home, where you help sellers understand all their options and then recording it and using that in your pre-appointment process for expert positioning and, and just educating the educating the educating the consumer. I mean, could you imagine how great it would be if someone, you know, watched your seller workshop for an appointment? Incredible. Right. So you can go watch some of those and that'll help you give you an idea of what you'd uh, put in one of your pre-listing kits. But it's important. I will say this from a direct, since we're talking a little bit about direct mail. Um, always, always, always before an appointment, there is a FedEx that goes out or it is hand delivered. There is a FedEx that goes out or it is hand delivered. The worst thing to do is email it. Right. But there is a FedEx delivered or it is hand delivered like a full blown pre-listing packet. Um, and you can Google pre-listing kits and see what agents put in them uh, to position you correctly. That gives you, there's a lot of heavy lifting before the appointment. Uh, so when you arrive, you know, that's kind of been laid down for you. A little direct mail tips as we talk about direct mail today. All right. Any other questions? What else would you guys like to know about generating seller leads with direct mail? This is one of the easiest things I can teach you and it works great. Hopefully you can use it to grow your business. We'll go about 30 seconds here and then we'll wrap it up if that's not the case. So feel free to ask something. Does it help to send people, John asks, 
uh, who don't want to call to an online funnel? Um, mm, mm, no, no. Um, I would definitely include your website. So in that letter, I could just as easily as include you know the website down at the bottom. So they could go there, but if they go to the website, you know, now they're off in la la land and they're on Zillow and they opt into three other forms, five other forms and every other agent's calling them. Um, I like them to go to the website knowing they exist. Maybe they go there and check it out. Right. But I want them to call because <laughs> I want their phone number or email you. I think the best, my opinion, the best direct response for any type of direct mail is either to call or email you certainly include a link to your website. That's fine. All right let alone the name of your company, they can Google it and find it. But the, the the method of response from direct mail should be to call or email you. Make that the main goal, all right? Uh, and feel free to put your website on there as well. But I wouldn't say, hey, you know, go log on here, type in this type in this URL and go do this. Uh, I'm just not a fan of that personally. I want the phone call. Good question, John. Yep. I mail a lot of these. Yeah. And again, it's a little anecdotal, but it's just somebody in the space that's been doing this for a long time. Those are my decisions. All right. How many times do you send a letter to the same less frequency? Oh, um, look, you're, let's just say you do this like most agents do. You're mailing a couple hundred around depending or a listing. Got it? Don't worry about it. I mean, it's just going to kind of be around wherever. Do it all the time. Don't even worry about it. Any, if, you, if your system is to do the golden letter every time there's a pending or a listing. And you could do it around other people's pending listings. It's perfectly fine, all right, or yours. I maybe mentioned it in the letter of that sentence I showed you. Uh, don't worry about it. The reality is more is always better. If you go read the book, um, The Million Dollar, Millionaire Real Estate Agent by Gary Keller, written in like 2006, probably the best book I've read on business. It's just so good. I mean, I've read a lot of business books. <laughs> that is a darn good business book. And um, there's a concept in there called a 33 touch. Now I know it's for the people you know, but just the concept of a 33 touch, at least in 2006 was like, you got to touch your list 33 times a year. And people are like, oh, oh, 33 times. That's so much that everyone's going to hate me. This is way too much to touch my list. He's like, well, that's the idea. Like when we look at the top producers, they're just hammering, hammering away, right? Like, you know, no apologies. And I think that's the deal with direct mail. Just mail it as much as you can. The more you can afford, the more people you can mail, spend the money and mail it as much as you can. Um, I've never reached the point of diminishing returns on direct mail because I always run out of money before I run out of the returns <laughs> because there's just so many people and so many times you can mail. So don't worry about how many times you mail on the same list using this type of I have a buyer strategy. Um, mail it all the time. People will know that you have lots of buyers. It's like, hey, gosh, you've been sending like five letters so far that you had these buyers. You must have buyers. Let's talk. <laughs> Those are my thoughts, Grant. Great question. All right. What else? I love them. Keep bringing them up. That's why we're here. That's why you're here live versus watching the replay, which you watch late at night, but you took time out of you to watch it here because you can chat with me. Other questions. John Smith, what types of response rate, what type of response rate you and others tend to get with this letter? Uh, a couple calls. I think every time you mail two or 300, it's about 1%. So two or three legitimate calls. Seriously, it's about 1%. You know, so if you mail two or 300 letters, you'll get two to three phone calls. Um, and the phone calls will probably be, well, <laughs> that's not the ones where it's like, don't mail me. Ah! You'll get those. Don't worry. All right, I'll take them off your list. But generally it's going to be, you know, hey, you know, we've been thinking about selling. What's this buyer? Who are you? You know, clearly you must be selling homes in the area. Let's talk. You'll probably get a couple, couple, couple phone calls. I mean, think about it. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be great if you spent, what was it, $240? And every time you mailed the, the 200 or so that I put in, you got a listing? Come on. Come on. Absolutely. I mean, the reality is for most of you, um, most real estate agents are willing to spend about 10% of their commission to get the listing. So let's just say your, your listing, your, 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 your typical commission is $6,000, all right? Um, it would be reasonable and it'd be good business if you spent $600 on marketing to get it. Got it, 10%. So with a $600 mail budget, you could probably mail about, call about a dollar a letter, probably mail 600 letters. But if every time you mailed 600 letters, 
right? Maybe it's, you know, two pendings a month, right? You have two pendings a month and you mail 300 letters around it, 300 letters around it. And those two mailings a month got you one extra listing a month for 600 bucks. I mean, sold, <laughs> sold. I'll take that trade every single day, right? Plus it's like, you know, there's no better lead than direct mail, man. I'm telling you, like when someone gets a letter, they read it, it's in their hands and they go on over their phone and they type it in and they call you. Like that's a solid, solid lead. Versus like, you know, someone half brain dead on Facebook, <laughs> you know, opting in, <laughs> trying to chase that. Uh, the quality that comes from direct mail leads are really high quality. So I look for 1% response rate, John. Absolutely. But, th but think about that too. Like, you know, really what ultimately matters is how much money did you spend to get the listing? And you really should not spend, I'll give you a budget. You'll have to spend something if you want to scale your business. Like, you can start off just being on the phones all the time yourself and spend no money. That's where most people start. But eventually, like, gosh, this is exhausting. I like to spend a little money here to make my life easier. Give me some, you know, come list me calls, <laughs> you know, reinvest my capital. Um, I wouldn't spend more than 10% of your commission to get the deal. So if your typical, typical commission is $6,000, you have a $600 budget to get a listing. <sighs> Throw a lot of letters, man. Looks great. How's that, John? Other questions? Great questions. Keep them coming. I'm having fun. Hope you guys are having fun. Most of you guys want to know on the golden letter. I guess I'll give about 30 seconds. Do, 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 do. All right, we're good. All right, so thanks for watching Keep It Real. I'm Frank Klesitz. Just helping you guys out, helping you get some listings. Helping you sell some houses. Hopefully you learned something good today. Thanks for asking all these questions. If you want to watch the replay, it'll be on YouTube, on the Real Geeks YouTube channel. And uh, I'm out. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.